welcome to the new lecture in electrical machines in this lecture we are going to start a new topic that is alternator the other name of alternator is three phase synchronous generator so first we will start the introduction for synchronous machines in ac system the voltage level can be increase or decrease very easily with the help of a transformer therefore this system is exclusively used for generation transmission and distribution of electric power so in ac system when we need to transmit generate and distribute the electric power then we need to increase the level of the voltage this is basically done with the help of the transformer now what is a synchronous generator in synchronous generator the mechanical power or energy is basically converted into electrical power or energy with the help of an ac machine this ac machine is basically known as the alternator or the synchronous generator so here in synchronous generator we are converting the mechanical energy into electrical energy and this is an ac machine the other form of synchronous machine is basically synchronous motor so here we have discussed the synchronous generator now we are going to discuss the synchronous motor so in synchronous motor the transmit of energy is basically taking place in the same machine where energy is converted from electrical to mechanical so same machine the synchronous machine can be operated as a generator or a motor in basically converting the direction of the energy flow so the same machine can be operated as a generator or a motor known as the synchronous machine so synchronous machine is the one which can produce both the electrical energy or the mechanical energy in terms of the generator or the motor here the synchronous speed that is the speed of the rotating magnetic field is basically given by 120 f by p where f is basically the frequency of the supply and p is basically the number of poles so ns is the speed with which the synchronous uh, rotating magnetic field speed now what are the general aspects of the synchronous machine a synchronous machine whether it is a generator or a motor is basically an electromechanical transducer that is converting the mechanical energy into electrical energy or vice versa so this we have seen in the previous slide as well that the synchronous machine can be thought of an electromechanical transducer second point is that what are the fundamental phenomena that are responsible for the conversion of the energy so first we will see the law of electromagnetic induction so in the law of electromagnetic induction it states that the production of emf that is electromagnetic force induced in a conductor is whenever it cuts across the magnetic field so if we have a conductor and it is cutting the magnetic field obviously an emf is produced so this synchronous machine is relates with the fundamental principle of law of electromagnetic induction the second law is basically the law of interaction law of interaction is the phenomena of production of force or a torque whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field so here we have the production of emf it means that law of electromagnetic induction goes with the generator whereas the production of force or a torque due to the law of interaction is going for a motor now by the interaction of the magnetic field produced by the current so the current is responsible for the production of the magnetic field which is uh, carrying a conductor and the main field a force is exerted on the conductor and the torque is developed this torque which is responsible for the production of running of any motor so that is law of interaction now what is a synchronous machine synchronous machine can be an alternator which is the primary source of electrical energy so any generating plant 
produce uh, electrical energy with the help of an alternator which is basically a three phase synchronous generator whereas the synchronous motor can be used as a motor as well as power factor compensator so power factor concentrator uh, compensators are basically known as the synchronous condensers so synchronous uh, motor can be used both as a motoring operation or as a power factor compensator now let us discuss the alternator or the ac generators the principle of operation we have discussed that is electromagnetic induction it consists of armature winding and magnetic field because emf can be produced only when the current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field so obviously the magnetic field has to be there and there has to be the principle of induction so it will consist a winding which is placed in the magnetic field now the armature is stationary whereas the field is rotating or revolving so in case of an ac uh, generator the conductor which is carrying the current is basically stationary whereas the field is rotating whereas we when we have discussed for a dc machine we have discussed that in case of a dc machine the field is uh, stationary whereas the armature is rotating so that is reverse process in case of an ac machine it is opposite to dc machines in terms of the uh, rotating field and the stationary armature now the important parts we have a stator which is armature winding on the stationary element so stator is basically a part of a ac generator which is stationary and it is carrying the armature winding the rotor is basically the rotating part which is carrying the field winding on the rotating element so the element is basically rotating and it is carrying the field winding this is responsible for production of the flux now if we compare the action of the generator and the motor uh, in, in the synchronous machine so first we will discuss the generating action where the mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy so in generating action we will convert the mechanical energy to electrical energy the rotation is due to mechanical torque and therefore the mechanical torque and the speed with it in omega are in the same direction so the mechanical torque is responsible for the rotation and as a result both the mechanical torque and the speed are in the same direction the frictional torque tf act in the opposite direction to the rotation of omega so the direction in which the motor or the rotor is rotating the frictional torque will be in opposite direction now the electromagnetic torque acts in opposite direction to the mechanical torque so the conservation principle is the power that is the mechanical power which is the product of omega into tm that is the electromagnetic that is the mechanical torque is equal to the electrical power which is omega into te plus the frictional power that is omega into tf now here since it is converting the mechanical energy into electrical energy obviously the internally generated emf will be more than the terminal voltage so this will be the vt the terminal voltage will be less than the uh, induced emf and the torque angle is leading in this case the torque angle will be leading now if we compare the motoring action uh, keeping the generating action as the reference so here the conversion of energy in the reverse process whereas the electrical energy is converted to mechanical energy rotation here is due to electromagnetic torque so here we have discussed that the rotation is due to mechanical torque here the rotation is due to electromagnetic torque and hence the electromagnetic torque and omega will be in the same direction whereas the frictional torque as well uh, will be in the opposite direction to omega similarly to the previous uh, case so tm uh, in opposite direction to te so the mechanical torque is opposite direction to the electrical torque and it forms the relationship omega te is equal to omega tm plus omega tf that is the electrical power is equal to the mechanical power plus the frictional uh, power here the uh, voltage v is more than e because we have the electrical energy converted to mechanical energy 
So whatever the voltage generated will be greater than uh, induced EMF E. The torque angle here is lacking whereas the torque angle is leading in case of the generator. So this is the compression, uh, comparison between the generator action and the motoring action. So if you compare more into deep is that the EMF is induced in the armature conductor when they cut across the magnetic field in case of the generating action. Then when the circuit is close obviously the current will flow through the armature conductor which produce another field. Now closing is very important because then only the current will flow. Now the interaction of this field, so this field is basically produced by the current carrying conductor and the main field is produced by the field winding of a force is exerted on the conductor which acts in the opposite direction to that of the rotation. So obviously a force is produced due to the interaction of the two field. The mechanical power is then converted into electrical power which is the generating action. Now if you see the motoring action, a current is supplied to the machine which flows through the armature conductor. So here if you see the uh, current is being away from the armature conductor, here current is taken supplied to the armature conductor. The armature conductor then produces a field which interacts with the main field which is similar to the generating action. Thus a force is exerted on the conductor and rotation takes place. So this is uh, common between the generating action and the motoring action. And once the rotation occurs and EMF is induced in the conductor due to the relative motion, this EMF acts in the opposite direction to the flow of the current. So whether it is a generating action or a motoring action, there will be two fields which will interact with each other and as a result there will be production of the rotation of the rotor. Now the electrical power is converted to mechanical power in case of the motoring action. So that is the comparison between the generating action and the motoring action. So how the sinusoidal alternating EMF is produced because in case of a generating action uh, for a synchronous machine we will be having a sinusoidal alternating EMF. So this is because of the principle of electromagnetic induction which we have discussed that if a conductor or a coil is uh, cutting the magnetic field obviously an EMF is induced and this is due to the principle of electromagnetic induction. Now this is can be achieved by how it can be achieved either rotating a coil in a stationary magnetic field so we have been keeping the stationary the magnetic field and rotating the coil or it keeping the coil stationary and rotating the magnetic field which is the reverse of the first step. So both way we can produce the uh, sinusoidal alternating EMF. In the first case if you talk about this case here the field is stationary this is the case of the DC machine whereas when at the rotating magnetic field this is the case of AC machine. So in case of a synchronous machine our field will be rotating whereas the conductor will be stationary. Now the speed and frequency and what is the relationship between the two quantities. So we have the synchronous speed and we have the frequency of the alternating supply. What is the relationship between the two quantities. So if we uh, draw a diagram consisting of the magnet that is the north pole and the south pole alternate so the uh, distance between the north pole and south pole is basically known as the pole pitch which is the actual distance between the two poles so if we conductor uh, if we con uh, assume a conductor at x has b max so this is at the position x we have the maximum flux density in the current uh, uh, magnetic field thus have the maximum emf induced in it so in the case a uh, place of conductor x where the magnetic flux density is maximum obviously the emf induced will be also maximum now at interpolar gap that is at a so if we take uh, the point a which is the interpolar region between the two poles uh, so here we have the interpolar region these are the polar regions uh, the minimum induced EMF is produced because the flux density is minimum. So in the interpolar region we will be having the minimum uh, flux density and as a result the minimum EMF will be produced. One cycle of EMF induced in a conductor when one pair of poles passes over it. So when the EMF that is the electromagnetic force is produced and we measure one cycle when a conductor 
is passing one pair of poles. Then, uh, in other words, we can say that the EMF in an armature conductor goes through one cycle in angular distance equal to twice the pole pitch. So, when the conductor is basically covering an angular distance equal to twice 2p, that is twice the pole pitch, then we can say that one cycle of induced EMF is there. Since one cycle of EMF is equal to one pair of poles passes past a conductor, we can say that the number of cycle of EMF produced in one revolution of the rotor is equal to number of pair of poles. So number of pair of poles can be equal is equal to number of cycles of EMF that is producing in one revolution of the rotor. Then we can write number of cycle per revolution is equal to p by 2 where p is the number of poles. Number of revolutions per second is basically n by 60 because n is the speed that we are taking in rpm. So here we have in rpm. So here we have taken in second. So we are dividing n with 60. Then the frequency is basically p by 2 half pair of poles half poles into n by 60. So we are getting pn by 120. So it means that the frequency is pn by 120 hertz. So obviously from here if you try to find the speed, so speed is equal to 120 f by p. So there is a direct relationship between the speed and the frequency. So when we increase the speed of the machine that is the rotor obviously the frequency of the supply will increase keeping the poles fixed so this is comes from the construction so the pole number of pair of poles will be fixed so the speed and frequency are directly related to each other now if we see the construction of any synchronous machine the most simple machine thinking of a stator and the rotor so stator is basically the stationary part and a rotor is basically the rotating part so st stator is the one uh, which is carrying the armature conductors and where the flux is uh, path is there and rotor is carrying the field winding to produce the flux and between the stator and the rotor obviously there will be an air gap so the field coils will be owned on the rotor to produce the field flux and there will be n turns of armature winding which is present on the stator so whenever we will discuss the construction of the synchronous machine in detail then we will be seeing these all things what are stator rotor armature windings and more detail into it for the time being we will understood the uh, overview that for magnetization, it is taking place from a DC source. So basically the DC source of 125 to 600 volts is required to produce the flux uh, in the air gap. So the exciting or the magnetizing current uh, from a small DC sun generator. So a small DC sun generator is uh, mounted on the alternator shaft to produce the excitation current so which is requiring a supply of 125 to 600 volt voltage so field is rotating and the current supplied is through the two slip rings so here in this case the field will be rotating whereas the current is supplied through the slip rings excitation voltage is relatively small so we can see that 125 to 600 volt is very small and slip ring and brush gear are of light construction so compared to the dc machine here we can see that construction is relatively simpler because the slip ring and brush gear are of light construction in other excitation system which is known as the brushless excitation system a three phase AC exciter and a group of rectifiers are used to supply the DC. So there are different type of excitation system available in case of a synchronous machine to produce the magnetization from the DC source. So that we are going to discuss uh, in more detail in the coming lecture. For uh, the time being we understand that there is something which is called brushless excitation system where we have a three phase AC exciter and a group of rectifiers. 
Now the brushes, slippering and commutator are eliminated. So these are basically present in the DC machine which makes the DC machine construction very complex, more uh, costly as well as more complicated. Whereas in the brushless excitation system we will not have any brush, we do not require any slip rings and the uh, absence of commutator the construction become more simpler and more cheaper. Now the stationary uh, conductor that is present in the stator will cut the magnetic flux produced by the rotating rotor and an induced EMF is there in the stator. So the armature conductor is basically present in the stator and stator itself is stationary whereas the flux is produced by the rotor and due to the rotation of the rotor the flux is rotating and which is cutting the stationary conductor which is producing an induced EMF. Now because of the alternate north and south pole alternating EMF or current is produced. So we see that sinusoidal alternating uh, EMF is produced because the north and south pole are alternating in the machine. Now frequency will depend on the speed that we have seen that frequency depends upon the north and south pole moving past a conductor in one second. So uh, the frequency of the induced EMF is basically depending on how the conductor is moving in one second to the north and south pole of the machine and its direction that is the induced EMF direction is basically given by the Fleming's uh, right hand rule. So Fleming's right hand rule is used to find the direction of the induced EMF in case of the generator. Now uh, if we compare the DC machine with the AC machine we know that in the DC machine the field will be stationary whereas the conductor will be uh, revolving or the rotating. However in AC machine we see that the there will be rotating field and there will be stationary armature. So it will have some advantage. So what are the advantage it has? So the output current that is directly tapped from this fixed stationary terminals without brush contact. So whenever the conductor is uh, rotating, it means the current carrying conductor is rotating. So we required a brush contact uh, in order to tap the current. But here since the armature is stationary, the conductor is stationary, the output current can be directly tapped from the fixed stationary terminals. And it is also easier to insulate stationary armature conductor for high AC voltage 30 kV or more. So in case of a AC generator where high level of uh, AC voltage is produced, obviously the insulation problem will be there. But since the conductor is not revolving and it is stationary, it is easier to insulate. Now the sliding contact that are the slip rings are transferred to the low voltage side, low power DC field circuit therefore easily insulate. So if we compare the DC machine with the AC machine, we know that the slip rings are basically present uh, in contact with the brushes and it is present with the revolving conductor. Whereas in the AC machine, these uh, slip rings has been transferred to the low voltage, low power DC field circuit which is in the range of 125 to 600 volt and therefore it can be easily insulated. Now armature winding can be more easily braced to prevent any deformation due to mechanical stress produced by the short circuit current and high centrifugal force. So we know that whenever the high centrifugal force is there uh, and also because of the short circuit a heavy mechanical stress is produced and these can damage the armature conductor. So here the armature conductor can be easily braced because the armature winding is stationary and it will prevent the deformation. So in this particular lecture we have uh, undergone the introduction of the synchronous machine and in the next lecture we will discuss more on the construction of the synchronous machine, how it works as a generating mode and the motoring mode that is the synchronous generator and synchronous motor. So thank you for now and see you in the next lecture.